Ever dream of your radio station hosting DJs from California to Calgary, Texas to Timbuktu, or even DJ Earl from across town with a broken down Pinto who can't come into the station? I'm Jeff, the radio DJ dude, and that pesky problem of seamlessly integrating remote DJs has perplexed a lot of us for a long time. Now, there are some solutions, but come on, the audio quality is suspect and it lags more than a dial-up modem. Coming up, I'm gonna reveal the secret sauce to remote radio that actually rocks with a potential solution that'll actually have your DJs, remote DJs nonetheless, sounding studio fresh with very minimal latency. Yeah, pretty cool, right? This will allow you to go live from anywhere across the planet. Yeah, even there. We are on the air. Before you could rock your remote mic setups, you gotta gather some software goodies first. First, you need a solid screen sharing app. My favorite is TeamViewer. Next up is a virtual audio mixer. And for the radio DJ crowd, you probably already have Voice Meter Banana or something similar installed. And most important, you need a way to transmit audio from your remote mic back to the radio station. I will be using a service called Audio Movers, but I also tested Clean Feed, which is another alternative. And the big caveat here is at this price point, at this level with this software, there aren't any true zero latency options unless you drop a lot of money and you lease a T1 line or you drop more money and you buy a more full featured radio station playout software package that already has low to no lag remote DJ functionality baked in. But for most of you and me included, that's not our deal. So we press on with an affordable solution with low latency. Enough with the disclaimers. Let's get this thing moving. Get all those apps installed and we'll start with configuring the virtual audio mixer. And yes, I'm rocking voice meter banana for this. If you look down here at the send buttons, I am using B1 to route audio to my encoder, which then pushes the radio station stream out to the internet. So B1 is for my encoder and through B1, I have the feed from Radio DJ, that's just the program out, and the remote mic. Both those are routed to B1. Now the signal on B2 is going to Audio Movers Listen To app. And for that, once again, the program live feed from Radio DJ and also Radio DJ's Q monitor is going to B2. For the ultimate flexibility and quality, you want to avoid using Radio DJ's mic input. No, no, no. It's important to route your mic through a separate channel on your virtual audio mixer. As you see here, remote mic has its own unique channel. Before we set up Audio Mover's Listen To app, I want to give you an overview of what's happening here. In this setup, we have two computers, the radio station and the remote DJs, and both will be running audio movers. So on the radio station side, you're going to be transmitting the audio from radio DJ or whatever radio playout software you're using to the receiver over on the remote DJ's computer. Your remote DJ will then be transmitting the audio from their remote mic back to the receiver at your radio station's computer. Okay, <laughs> got it? Good. Now let's set it up. So it's really important you get this right. On listen to your input device, that's our virtual output B2 from voice meter banana. So that's why I have this set up voice meter aux output. That coincides with B2. So we're sending the signal from radio DJ. And as you remember, we have both the Q monitor and we have the program feed, your radio station audio signal being routed through B2. As for your output device, we're sending this to VB audio virtual cable, which on voice meter banana is the remote mic channel. Because once again, the remote DJ computer is transmitting the audio from that remote mic to the receiver of the listen to app at your radio station. So that's what it's outputting. Make sure to dial these in or you ain't transmitting nothing, honey. And the app really has two sections, the transmitter and the receiver. First up, the transmitter. Select a low latency. And I did an exhaustive test on latency, which we'll get to in a little bit. Up next is the quality setting. An audio mover gives you a decent selection here. Now, PCM is the highest quality, but it comes at the expense of bandwidth. I found the Opus codec is a nice trade-off between quality and size. But you need to run your own tests, which I just so happen to do. 
I did pit the PCM codec up against the Opus. So right now I'm testing the Opus codec at 256K. You see how this sounds? One, two, three, four, five. This is a big jump. I'm boosting the latency to 0.7 seconds as we test PCM 16-bit. Now this is a bandwidth hog compared to the others. Let's see the quality of this and how it compares to some of the other more lighter weight codecs. Ultimately, choose one that makes your ears happy and doesn't tax your bandwidth too much. And the second component of the app is the receiver side. This is where the signal from your remote mic will come in. And we start the session and you could see audio coming in from my remote mic right there. And if we pop back over to voice meter banana, we could see this thing in action. Look at this. When I enable B2, you could see the levels in listen to come to life. So that's the live signal from radio DJ right there. Now we need to configure the listen to app over on the remote PC or Mac. That's the great thing with audio movers. It works both on Mac and PC. So similar to the radio station side, we set up all of our input and output settings and all the rest. We log in, start streaming. And right here, you could see the levels from my mic. They're pagan. And that's right here in the transmitter section. And over here on the receiver side, those are the levels coming in from the radio station computer that's running Radio DJ. We're getting closer to testing this out, but first we need to log in to the radio station computer. And for that, we'll use my screen sharing software of choice, TeamViewer. So we could already tell that we're connected because this is voice meter banana back at the radio station and it's picking up my signal. And here's the radio station's feed coming over the radio DJ channel. So now we want to jump over and start up listen to. There we go. That's the radio station's feed coming through loud and clear. And as you can see here on the right, this is my audio coming in. Let's pop back over to Radio DJ and... We're doing our show. We're off and running, just waiting for our next talk break. The reason this works is the mix minus setup that we put into place in Voice Meter Banana. So mix minus means that on the mixer, we're routing just the audio from the radio station. The audio signal from Radio DJ is being sent to our headphones and our remote location. Whereas if we also sent the audio from our remote mic, the latency would drive you crazy. Your head would explode because, unfortunately, there's no way to roll a zero lag, a zero latency situation. So by only hearing the audio from your radio station, it allows you actually to, you know, talk over the music and interact with your live signal from your station in a seamless fashion. Well, in theory, we'll test that out coming up. So you may be marveling at these cool, colorful buttons at the bottom of my screen. Well, those are actually Voice Meter Banana's macro buttons. They're fully customizable, and I created four of them to do the following. I have an integrated talk fade button. So when I hit that right before I go on the air, it'll bring the levels of the music down. It'll then pot my remote mic up. Once I do my yakety yak, I hit it again. Then it immediately pots the mic down and returns the music back to zero dB. Next up is this cool Q monitor, which allows me to switch from Radio DJ's program feed, the live feed from your station, to the Q monitor functionality. So I could preview audio from Radio DJ. And once again, I set that up in Voice Meter Banana so that B2 send is sending audio from both the program feed of Radio DJ and the Q monitor. And this button toggles between the two. And then we have a simple mic on and off button and then a fade song button, which basically just brings the levels down and then returns them back to zero dB when you push it again. Now, we don't have time to do a deep dive on how to create these macro buttons, but I have to tell you, Voice Meter Banana's user manual has a lot of good information. And I'm sure there's a bunch of YouTube videos that I probably accessed to build these four buttons. It was not difficult and they really provide a lot of flexibility. So when I talk over Bangles Walk Like an Egyptian, I'm first going to open the mic, then hit Fade Song, which will bring the Voice Painter Banana channel down about negative 8.5 dB. And I'll switch over here to Instant Players, and I'll actually 
try to interact with one of these listener drop-ins too. Okay, we're getting close. Are you ready? Coming down in five seconds. So I'm going to hit the mic on. Extreme 80s fun right here on Triple X 80s. I'm Jam and Jeff Scott. And whether you walk like an Egyptian or run like a Roman, head over to XXX80s.com and get a request in like right now. Okay, that's fairly decent for our first go. I mean, the only thing I didn't account for was the lag when I triggered that sound effect. So that's something to be mindful of. Earlier, I mentioned I did a pretty significant latency test with the system. One, two, three. Now, here's what you really have to keep in mind. Don't buy any of this, because a latency test in my system really has little relevance to the latency you'll experience on your system. There's too many external factors that go into this. There's your internet provider, there's their bandwidth, it's a distance from, you know, your internet provider's hub, traffic on the line. Too many variables to account for. I will play a couple snippets from my test, but like I said, grain of salt them. The only one that I found interesting was after 45, 60 minutes, latency does significantly start to drift. But what I found was just stopping the stream on the Listen To app and then immediately restarting it kind of refreshes the latency clock and then you're kind of back in sync with low latency. So keep that in mind. Here's a sample of a fresh stream. These are the kind of results I'm getting. One, one two, two, three, three four, four. And like I mentioned, 45 to 60 minutes, eh, very noticeable latency. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. But then we stop and restart and boom, we're back in business. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Come on, folks. Unless you lease an expensive T1 line and you got to buy expensive gear, There aren't a lot of 100% lag-free options at this level. I feel this workflow will check a lot of boxes for a lot of people. If you're using radio station playout applications that don't have their own built-in functionality for remote DJs, and some of the more expensive software offerings, they already have that, and they come with very low, maybe even to no latency. But once again, that's probably not you. I know it's not me. So is this the latency busting remote DJ solution that you've been dreaming of? Well, I can't wait to hear your experience with this. Give this a try and let me know how it works out for you. Now, like I said, there isn't a one size fits all solution. There's just too many variables to contend with. I'm Jeff, the radio DJ dude. And if you actually have a better, a more reliable and robust solution, well, please, Don't hoard it. Come on. We'd love to hear about this brilliant idea of yours. And we'd love to find a way to pull this off even with less latency. So please drop your brilliant idea right down here in the comments. Far from brilliant, but if you found this little video mildly interesting, well, I'd love a like and subscribe from you. Really appreciate that. And please don't lag. (laughs) Click now. Thank you so much for hanging with me and Until we fire up this radio DJ transmitter again, I want you just to do one thing, keep rocking those mics all over the world.